Right then. Now it's a sensational Sunday. Yeah. Sun's coming up. Just a few clouds in the sky. Let's see if we can have a better day than yesterday. A one hour project took all day. <laughs> it works, it looks good, but it took all day. Now, today's mission has changed. Um, the original mission was to just keep working on this hallway. Uh, I want to get the logs up on the ceiling today. Yeah, so that means I got to cut them to length. I got to rusticate them and stain them, polyurethane them, let them dry enough so I can handle them, and then attach them to the ceiling. So, that in of itself is a day project. Plus, I wanted to uh, build a new door for the shitty shed. But, you know me, grand aspirations, the best laid plans of mice and men, and uh, I always fall short. So what happened for the first half of today as far as a plan is making a road trip. So my friend Rob, Kate's husband, my replacement, Ugg, well, I think that would have been an epic shit show. I think I'm better off, much better off with Scrunchy. Um, yeah, she's, uh, she's more compatible. But anyway, um, that being said, uh, Rob, he, he loves to poke around on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and stuff like this and look for deals. He's a Wheeler dealer, uh, Sanford and son of sorts. Yeah. So, if ever I want to find something, and I'm lazy, and I have no ambition to do this, poke around on social media looking for items to buy if I need them. I just call my bloodhound, AKA Rob, and I say, hey bud, I'm looking for this. Think you can find me? Find me that? And he goes right to work. And next thing you know, he finds me what I'm looking for. So in this particular case, uh, the, the, the season, the, the warm weather season is wrapping up here. Winter's right on the doorstep. And since I've made a decision that I'm going to drive the Jeep in the winter now, ugh, um, I got to get different tires on that thing. Like I said before, the tires that are on it are a mud tire, useless in the snow and the ice. The original stock rim size that's on that Jeep is weird. It's a 17 inch, 10 inch wide kind of thing. So it's hard to find tires, um, especially used tires. I can go buy brand new tires all day long for it, but used, meh. It's proven to be a little difficult. So um, I saddled the Bloodhound with the task. And true to form, he came through and my inbox started getting pounded with options for tires, used tires for the Jeep. Uh, being sold all over the state of Wisconsin. So as I'm wading through the options that he's sending me, I'm seeing a lot of these tires are half worn out. The tread blocking pattern on them 
is not conducive to good traction on the ice and snow. They're not mud tires that he's sending me because I specified I don't want mud tires. I got mud tires. I need all season radial snow rated traction tires. So he's sending me this stuff. But what people are doing is they're selling tires that are half, half gone. There's maybe one season left on them and then they would have to go to the scrapyard. So I, I, I'm not doing that. I want to try to find some tires that are in great shape at least three quarters of the way there, if not more, and uh, are suitable for snow and ice traction. So I'm wading through listing after listing after listing that he's sending me. And all of a sudden he sends me the jackpot. Oh my God. And it's a screaming deal. So what he sent me is a guy selling a set of four Blizzak snow tires, snow and ice tires. Those are the best, one of the best Michelin and I guess has come out with a really great snow and ice tire now this year. Um, but Blizzak has been known in the tire world as the ultimate snow and ice traction tire. As a matter of fact, the rally car drivers over in Europe up until Michelin started coming out with some good uh, Michelin and Nitto, Nitto brand, N-I-T-T-O, started coming out with some really good Icelandic ice and snow traction type tires. Um, Blizzak was the go-to. They would run those on the rally race cars over in Europe when they were racing in the woods on the snowy, icy roads, forest roads. He sent me a link to a guy down in southern Wisconsin down by a tourist trap called Baraboo selling four Blizzak tires, almost new, three quarters of the way still there, if not more, seven eighths, mounted on Jeep Wrangler rims, stock rims, with the low tire pressure sensors still on the rims, that's the sensor that tells you when you've got a low tire pressure or a flat, your light will come on the dash indicating low tire. Already mounted and balanced um, with a tire bag, uh, meaning when you stack all four of these tires in your garage during the off season, when you take them off in the summer, uh, they make tire bags that will slip over that stack of tires so it doesn't look like a stack of tires sitting in your garage. It just looks like a nice vinyl tower, essentially. All of that, 550 bucks. Now I was talking to a tire shop up in the Pickers. I stopped in and talked to him during the work route one day, uh, just after I'd driven by the forested house of fornication. Um, it was just down the road from there. And I stopped in and talked to him about my situation and what I wanted to do and how I need snow tires for the winter on this thing. And we went out in the yard and we were looking at his used selection of tires and he found me a set of Yokohama's, um, a set of four that were about three quarters there that looked pretty good. And he was gonna sell me those four tires, used tires for 500 bucks. I would have to pay an extra 10 bucks a wheel to have them mounted and balanced. So that's another 40 bucks. So for about the same price, except factoring in the travel costs that I have to go down and get these, the gas there and back. Um, I've got the ultimate snow and ice tire already mounted on the rims, already balanced with the sensors on the rim for 550 bucks. So all I gotta do is jack up the vehicle, zip, 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 take off the mud tires, 
and wheels and install the snow tires and I'm done. No bullshit. No bullshit of hauling rims up north in my service van, dropping them off at the tire shop. He mounts and balances the tires. Um, and then picking them up at the end of the route, hauling them home all the way down here with the service van. You know what I mean? So to top it off, I was talking to the guy last night. To top it off, I asked him, I said, since you're about a two, two and a half hour run away from me one way, is there any chance you could meet me halfway? That's a stretch, you know. The guy's going out of his way, right? So, um, he said, yeah, there's a truck stop at the intersection of Highway 39 and 94. It's called Love's Truck Stop. He said, I'll meet you there. Sweet. Now, here's where the logistics got bad. My bank card was not working. The chip in the card had failed, and I can't withdraw money. I can't um, get gas at the pump. The card doesn't work. So I filed to get another card. But that takes approximately 10 business days to get here. They got to make a new card. So this means I can't go to an ATM and withdraw cash. Um, but I can't sit on this deal either. Uh, if I sit on it, it will, it'll vanish. It's a screaming deal. Hell, Blizzak tires are, in this size, 200 and some dollars a piece. And these things are every bit of three quarters of the way there. Yeah, I cannot pass this up. So I go to Scrunch and I'm like, what are we going to do? I, I can't, I don't have access to my money right now until this card comes in. And it turned into a big shit show. So she, Scrunchy, didn't want me to tap into the savings account that's sitting in the savings account for closing on the new house because the bank had instructed us not to make any big withdrawals or expenditures or apply for different loans or anything like that until the ink has dried on the paperwork, right? So Scrunch is all worried that if the bank decides at the 11th hour, hey, we want a bank statement from the month of October to see how you people have been behaving prior to the closing, and they see me making a $550 withdrawal from my savings account, which I have, because I figured out roughly I have an extra 1,500 bucks left over after closing um, above what is needed. Well, Scrunch is worried about two things. She's worried, what if at the 11th hour, we're sitting at the table and they say, no, nope, we were wrong. You don't need 1,300, you actually need the 1,500. And I've pulled out the money for the tires, and now we're short 550. That's one thing she's worried about. The other thing is the instructions from the Nazi bank. Don't touch your money. Don't do anything radical until the ink is dried on the paper. See, you know the rest of the story. So she's like, don't touch your savings. I'm like, where am I coming up with this money? The deal, once again, fell in my lap. I got to seize the opportunity. How are we going to do this? Well, she had some time to think about it. She said, all right. I guess you could probably get away with pulling out 550 out of the savings for the tires. Um, but then I realized my bank card doesn't work. It will work occasionally at a quick trip gas station ATM. The other day I tried to pull 20 bucks to put gas in the tank. And the first time I tried, it rejected the card because of the chip. The second time I tried, it went. So I was like, oh, there's a 50-50 chance it might not work at all now. 
the guy wants cash or PayPal or some other money transfer program. Um, he doesn't do Zelle. And Scrunch was worried about that too. She said, if you give somebody access to the bank account to, in doing a transfer or something like that, and it's actually a scam situation, now they have access to the savings account with the 15 grand sitting in it. She goes, that ain't smart. She said, let's try to get him cash or see if he'll take a paper check. Well, I asked about the paper check. He said, no, I don't blame him. I live two and a half hours away. He doesn't know me from Adam. It could turn into a mess. The days of paper checks, they're over. It's either cash or electronic fund transfer or something along those lines. So he, he, did, he rejected the paper check idea. So Scrunchy's idea was, um, and, and the ATMs at Quick Trip will only let you withdraw 200 bucks a day or something like that. They got some stupid rule. So I'm like, how are we gonna pull $550 in cash plus what I need to put gas in the tank to do this? How are we gonna do this? So her idea was, all right, I'll come down, I'll pull half of it out of my checking account, you pull the other half out of your savings account, and that should give you enough money to do what you gotta do. And then, on the day of closing, after it's all said and done, you take the money, you take my half, transfer it out of your savings back into my checking account so I can pay my rent for November. Makes sense, it'll work. So that's what we're gonna try this morning. Wish me luck. Now, at four o'clock this morning when my eyelids snapped open, the first thing I thought of is, is my new bank card here yet? So I literally took a walk, yeah, exercise at four in the morning down in the mailbox and sure enough there it was the only piece of mail in the mailbox my new bank card so that's huge so now i'm going to try to make the maximum withdrawal off that card i can out of the savings account i'm also going to put gas in the jeep to make this trip and scrunchy's going to do the same pull out the other half and I should be able to make this happen. So I, I contacted the guy this morning and I told him the update on the plan. I said, pray for a miracle that it all goes off without a hitch. And uh, I'm gonna make this trip down there. So he's still gonna meet me at that truck stop, which is half the distance. So that'll be, that'll be huge for fuel savings. And I will have a set of kick-ass snow tires and ice tires for the Jeep. We're going to be doing a lot of travel this winter. So even though we're still living here in the turd and we're still driving up to central Wisconsin every day for work, both of us, Scrunch needs tires too. Yeah, she bought her car. That's used. That's like one year old. It was a lease or something like that. But the tires that are on it are city slicker commuter tires. And they are worn down pretty good, and that they're that's not good. She's dangerous for snow and ice traction. And since we're commuting 30 minutes, you know, back and forth, morning and night, um, I want her to be safe. I don't want her looping out on the highway and causing a, a multi-car pileup or something. So. We got to budget tires for her car as well. Ugh, it never ends. But anyway, it looks like this is going to go off without a hitch, hopefully. Um, the guy that's selling them is currently out in the bow hunting woods right now. But he said he'll be home from 10 a.m. on. And I can come down and make this happen. So I'm going to stay in contact with him. As soon as Scrunch gets up here, she's going into work today. So I got to do this trip by myself. Thought about calling Rob and seeing if he wanted to come down and we just take his truck. 
That way I don't have to tow a trailer. See how nice it is to have a pickup truck? You just throw four, all four tires in the back of the truck. Boom. Um, but then I'd have to pay him for gas. <coughs> and I'd rather put gas in my truck and have some gas left over for the work week than put gas in his truck and watch it vanish. So I'll just take the Jeep with the trailer and make the risky journey. Um, but not having a not having a teammate along in case something goes wrong. Uh, two heads are always better than one, as evident by what Scrunch and I just did trying to figure out the financial logistics of making this happen. I don't have all the answers all the time. No, that's for sure. And I I value having Scrunch on the team. Now, here's something rather amazing. Sit down for this. Um, Scrunch came over last night and apologized. Yeah, so when I called her over here to ask her or to show her the situation that I was having with the lights in the stagger down hallway and how I couldn't fish the wires through the way I wanted to and now my solution to the problem was to literally cut the ceiling and rip the ceiling down, fish the wires, and then put up a different ceiling. She came over here and got rather aggressive in her rejection of that plan. Oh no, no. You're you you know, you're selling this. Why why do that? You're creating a nightmare. You never know when you open that up what's up there, blah 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 blah. You're just making tons of work for yourself. Just just no, don't do that. Just you know, live with it or something along those lines. And I was like why the hell are you getting so animated and aggressive when all I did was call you over to get your opinion? Can't you stay calm and rash a little and collected? So I, that kind of floored me. Well, she went back across the street. She realized the error of her ways that she kind of came at me a little aggressive for absolutely no reason at all. And she came over and apologized. That was awesome. But anyway... So I came up with a better solution, obviously, right? Problem solved, whatever. But two heads are better than one most of the time. So if I come up with a dumb idea, she can possibly see it from a different angle and come up with a better idea. If she has a dumb idea, I can do the same. It, it's nice. As long as you stay calm. Just stay calm. Don't do that. Oh, that's stupid. That's the dumbest idea I've ever. I don't do that to her. And she's come up with some dumb ideas. Just say it. We all do. It's human nature. Can't be geniuses 24-7. So uh, it'd be nice to have her along on the trip in case something happened. You know. So I, I don't know. But she's got to work today. So she's going to go into work and get caught up and do her thing, and I'm going to strike off on this adventure together, or by myself. I did that when I bought the fire stove. I bought that fire stove way down in southern Wisconsin as well, and I made the trip down there with the Jeep at that time with shitty tires. The tires were almost bald. And I went down with the trailer and the Jeep and picked up the fire stove. I also, once I was able to procure money to get new tires for the Jeep, I drove all the way over to Eau Claire, which is way out to the west, three hours one way, um, with bald tires, shaking tires, on a rainy day when there was ponding water and there was hydroplaning risks. Oh yeah, that was a white knuckle ride. But came home with nice three quarters new mud tires and yeah, all was well. But there again, a long trip in an old vehicle. That thing's a 2010. And uh, you know, I get a little I get a little anxious. Yeah. So, 
here we go again another white knuckle ride so but that's the mission for this morning and hopefully i can knock that out and then come back here and the next phase on the stagger down hallway is putting up the beams on the ceiling so we'll see how it goes but that's just a sensational sunday check-in here and uh of course tomorrow it's back to the grind but it's only a three-day work week right whoop whoop monday through wednesday and then thursday is the big day yep gonna do the final walkthrough on the house <coughs> with the realtors the owners the current owners scrunching myself and uh then we're gonna sit down at the mahogany table and fill out some paperwork with the advent now of electronic DocuSign and things like that, uh, a lot of the documents that would normally be signed at the table in physicality can now be signed electronically. And uh, that's, a, that's a big time saver. Scrunch thinks that the closing's not gonna go long. Um, back in the day, 20 some years ago when I bought my property, I remember sitting at the title company for every bit of two hours, going through papers and this and that, and sign here, sign here, sign here, on physical paper. Now it's all, it's done electronically, so that makes it a lot quicker. You get the document, there's a yellow dot, you click on the yellow dot, your automated signature pops up on the line and you hit accept. Easy peasy. So she's thinking it's going to go pretty smooth, pretty fast. And I got to show up with a cashier's check. I think that's what she said. For the down payment amount. And uh, we hand them the check. They become richer. And uh, the bank pays them their 325 for that house. And... Uh, we walk out of there with keys and garage door openers and maybe some paperwork. Who knows? Yeah. And then it's done. And then we can literally come back home, start hooking up boat trailers and stuff like that and shuttling stuff for the rest of the day, shuttling stuff up that's, that needs the trailers to haul it. Um, and I'll have the rental truck. I'm picking that up. Thursday oh yeah we gotta get that too I'm picking that up Thursday Thursday afternoon before the close of business I'm going to get the moving truck so it's gonna be a whirlwind day the morning is gonna be dead time um, because the closing is not till 2 in the afternoon so we're gonna sit around twiddle our thumbs and shit or get stuff staged, ready to go. Um, twiddle our thumbs until two, or we have the closing before that. And then, uh, yeah, so a whirlwind shit show, but exciting times. It's gonna be awful nice to get up in the morning like I am right now, early, and uh, when it's warmer, and go out on that little screen porch off the back of the house and uh, have an old antique radio sitting on a table out there with some jazz playing like now and enjoy my coffee and my pipe while looking out over the lake. A dream since I was 10. Yep, so. All right, that's just a check-in for Sunday. Talk to you soon.